Good evening, universe. I'm trying to keep it down because it's like 2.30 in the morning and my wife is asleep. I'm trying not to wake her up. So hopefully this is still loud enough for you to hear me. Welcome to the reading vlog for Legend Born. Full spoilers, so if you haven't read it, know that I will be discussing all the plot points as I traipse through this. I'm at page 142 right now, chapter 16. I wasn't originally gonna do a reading vlog, which is why it's so like into the book already for this update or beginning. But I keep thinking about this book and I have a lot of questions and predictions and ideas. First of all, what this book is about, if you haven't read it and are just watching this video because you don't mind spoilers, the idea that is that our main character, Bree, has gone to like an early college thing. She's like 16, but she's already taking college courses. There, she discovers a secret society of people who hunt basically demons. They're called Shadowborn, but also the secret society is like Arthurian legend. So there's like lines, like bloodlines that start with like each of the 13 you know, knights of the round table. And then each of those lines get other people who are not connected with the lines to help them. And those are called like vassal families. And Brie is not either of those, but she thinks that a demon had something to do with her mother's death. So there are spell casters and they're called Merlins. And she thinks maybe a Merlin had something to do with it. She knows that a Merlin tampered with her memory. So, she wants to get to the bottom of all of this, and so she's joining the society in order to find out what the heck is going on. Because she doesn't really trust these people, but she also doesn't trust the demons, and so she wants to get to the root of what happened with her mother's death. So, so far I am really enjoying the book. I don't love it yet, but I still feel pretty early on. You know, I'm not even to the halfway point yet, and I feel like this is pretty fast paced so there's a lot that could happen that can change my mind. So I'm kind of confused about something. So like I said each of the knights has like a line and then of that line there's what's known as the scion which is like the heir to the line. They're like the latest living member within the ages of 18 to 22 who is also the heir and then that person can, we just found out about this, and that person can get like awakened which basically means that they get more powers beyond what they usually have the powers that they get depends on what line it is there's one who gets like healing magic when he's like awakened so when the person gets awakened they're like filled with the spirit of the knight that they're the line of i'm not explaining this very well so for example with like the lancelot line if the lancelot Scion, which is the current descendant of the Lancelot line, if he or she or they get awakened, then they will have whatever powers, extra magical powers that Lancelot had before to fight the demons. <laughs> anyway, my question about this is, is like, is there only one scion per line? Because that seems like what they're saying, right? But like, also that's not that very many people. And this is only, Brie is only at one chapter, one outpost of the society, right? So do you just have to hope that you get a scion? Like how many chapters are there? I don't know yet. I'm hoping this will be explained. Also, there's a love triangle, or at least it seems like it's going that way because the two boys are about Bree's age and they were both described as being very handsome and they're both like very integral to her story. So I think this is gonna be a love triangle situation. So we have Nick, who is nice. He's our nice guy and it has just been revealed. He is the scion to King Arthur, so big shoes to fill. Then there's also Selwyn, who is a Merlin, which is like a class. And the class is like a spell caster, but he's not just a Merlin, he's a king's mage, which means that he's bonded to Nick for life. 
so we got a little bit of his tragic backstory just a tiny bit which I was fully expecting and fully excited for because he has very bad boy type vibes he has been like an antagonist so far but I'm thinking that he's gonna be endgame endgame love interest and the reason I think that is because I don't think you introduce a main lead male with golden eyes and then just don't make him end game. That would be wild. So I think it's gonna be Selwyn, but who knows? I believe this is the first in a trilogy, a planned trilogy. The second one is called Bloodmarked. It's supposed to come out later this year. That's where we're at. Oh, I am also, so there are different types of demons. We had it explained to us that there's a certain type of demon that can sometimes pretend to be a person. And I am definitely thinking this is going to come back to haunt us later. It's spelled like Eugle, Eugle, but I think it's pronounced Eichel. Either way, I'm definitely thinking that that's going to come back and be an issue later. That's my prediction. So my predictions that Selwyn is endgame, the Eichel, Eugle demon creature is gonna come back to haunt us. It's gonna be impersonating somebody that Brie knows or knew. Could be her mom. Oh, wouldn't that be wild? I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case at all. But it's gonna be somebody that she knows and that's gonna be like a twist near the end. I'm thinking, so this book is about 500 pages long. I'm thinking we're gonna find out who the Eichel, Eugel, human demon person is. I'm thinking around page 460. I'm making an extremely specific guess. I also think that by the end of this book, Nick is gonna be awakened and thinking some kind of lineage for Brie is going to be revealed. Maybe not the knights, but something else. She's got some sort of power going on because of her ability to resist being mesmered. So she's something, excited to see what it is. Those are all my guesses so far. I'm hoping we get more of Tracy. I really want them to see their their friendship repaired but sometimes that doesn't happen so we'll see okay I'll probably come back with an update tomorrow evening okay update it's now at 2 a.m. the next night and I have read up to page 296 and I'm really enjoying it there are definitely some twists that I did not see coming where is Bree's magic even going what is it coming from we learned about root magic so that was really cool I'm excited to see where that goes and we finally started getting the character turn from Cell, which I'm really excited about to see him a little bit starting to soften up. Got a little bit of a character turn from Nit too. I just finished reading about the second trial, so the part where Cell and Bree have a confrontation underneath the tunnels. Cell finally stops thinking that Bree is Shadowborn. The reveal that he's Shadowborn, that's pretty cool. Didn't see that coming. Let's see, new predictions. Something's gotta happen with Nick, right? This romance cannot keep going the way that it is. So I think, I don't know if I think he's a demon in disguise. I don't know, is he gonna die? Is he going to have a complete personality change when Arthur, when he gets called? Oh, maybe he'll get called and he won't be able to be with Brie anymore. He showed a little bit of a finally not just good boy situation in which he punched Cell really hard knowing that Cell could not retaliate and that was pretty messed up. I like seeing a little bit more of Nick's various sides because we've pretty much only got goody two shoes boy so far so I'm excited to see where that goes and that's where the, we're at. I am really enjoying it. I would say it's like low level love right now. Mm, high enjoyment is where I'll put it for the moment. Lots of lore to keep up with. And I find myself getting a little bit confused about who some of the characters are. There are a lot of characters like Sar and Tor and like a bunch of the boys. I can't keep the boys straight. I know that Vaughn is like the huge asshole, but maybe Vaughn's a demon. Somebody's a demon in disguise and I will not be convinced of that until the end of the series. I like William a lot. Love his healing. That's great. Yeah, that's where we're at. Excited to read more. Probably gonna slow down a little bit because I have to go back to work now. So I'll have a little bit less time for reading. Yeah, it's going quick. 
We'll see where it goes. Okay, so it's a couple of days later and I am now on page, I think, 416. Why didn't I check this first? The world may never know. For uh, 18. So I am getting pretty close to the end. I will probably finish this tonight in one sitting, just kind of charge through the ending there. The last thing that happened was that Nick offered for Bree to become his squire. I was gonna end at the end of that chapter when he's like, I choose Bree, Paige Matthews as my squire, but I had to see what she was gonna say. Okay, so I've now gotten to the part where she agrees to join and everybody freaks out. Yeah, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, there have definitely been a couple of twists that I did not expect. I want to know more about her lineage and what exactly is causing her powers, like precisely what's going on. So I loved the reveals with her mom, why she has her powers, all of that good stuff. That was great, so exciting. And the cell reveals. <sighs> I do wish that we had gotten the, my mom died when I was little and then my dad became a, you know, an alcoholic. I wish we had gotten that a little bit earlier, maybe not from him because I don't think earlier Cell would have said that, but maybe if Nick had let us know so that the twist was more twisty when it's like, oh, she's actually alive. I think that would have been cool. But for the most part, I'm really loving this. It has clarified some things that I had questions about, like earlier earlier, I think in this vlog, it's been a couple of days since my last update, by the way, I haven't been reading quite as much, but earlier in the vlog, I think I was asking about, well, does each one have the scion of the lines? And like, no, that's not how it works. There's the, the 12, I think total, but I feel like the Southern chapter has a really high concentration of them, right? Cause they have like four or five. And that seems like a lot if it has to be over the whole world. I don't know, but really liking it. I can't wait to see where it goes. I think something is gonna happen. I think they're gonna break up or something. I don't know. I don't know. I think in the last 88 pages, we're gonna get lots of demon battles. I think she's gonna step into her power a little bit and maybe they'll see her use magic that she shouldn't have and that will set us up for the sequel. Either way, I'm very excited, really enjoying it. Cell is my favorite. I got past the... <laughs> Like the Twilight scene where she's on his back and he's running and stuff. I really appreciate that Cell kind of ribs her for references to the little... Because that was a, a Twilight joke, right? And that seemed like that's where that was going. It's really fun. Really enjoying it. I can't wait for the ending. Okay, so I just finished Legendborn and wow. Okay, so I had thought, first of all, the Gorukel, Goraichel, I don't know how to pronounce these words, the demon who is disguised as a human. I knew that would come back around. I did think that it was going to be a character who was more directly. I thought he was going to be more important to the story. Like Evan is definitely like there, but <laughs> I don't know. I guess I thought it was going to be a more important character, but that really would only leave Cell and Nick. And obviously there were other plans for both of those guys. I did think early on that it was possible that Brie could have been a descendant of Arthur. I did not expect for it to be that way. That was heartbreaking, but also incredibly realistic and an awesome twist. I'm so excited to see Nick, obviously, he's going to have some identity crisis going on. I'm really excited to see where that goes in Bloodmark. Yeah, that ending was so good. So overall, I liked the book. And then the ending just really brought it all together, brought it home. I really like when she's going through as Vera and remembering things the way that it changes the formatting in the book so that it feels really distinctly different from the rest of the book. That was really cool. Really loved that. And I'm excited that Brie is Arthur. I can't wait to see how that works in the next book. Yeah, overall, awesome book. Every new twist, it's like, what is going on? It really kept me going. It kind of dragged in some places. Might have just been my brain. My brain has been a little bit draggy lately, so it could just be me. But yeah, there were so many twists and turns and really kept me guessing the whole time. I'm excited to see how they're going to keep that mystery component going in the next 
next book or if they do really well done loved it pretty much all my thoughts on legendborn so thank you for being on this adventure with me can't wait for the next book and have a beautiful night universe